Welcome back to Branches Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching VCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Brain Street Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. According to the Israeli military, two Israeli officers were dismissed and three others have been reprimanded for their roles in drone strikes that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. The military said they had mishandled critical information and violated the army's rules of engagement. The findings of a retired general's investigation into the deadly incident marked an embarrassing admission by Israel, which faces growing accusations from key allies of not doing enough to protect Gaza's civilians from its war with Hamas. The investigation also determined that a colonel authorized a series of deadly drone strikes on the convoy based on one major's observation from grainy drone camera footage that someone in the convoy was armed. The observation turned out to be untrue. The army said the colonel and the major were dismissed while three other officers were reprimanded. Results of the investigation have now been turned over to the military's advocate general who will decide whether the officers or anyone else involved in the killing should receive further punishment. According to the UN, more than 220 humanitarian workers have been killed in the conflict so far. A man has been arrested by authorities in connection to a fire that broke out at Senator Bernie Sanders' office in Burlington, Vermont last week. According to U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Vermont, said in their news release that 35-year-old Shant Sugamonian of Northridge, California, was arrested on Sunday morning. The man, who is also known by the first name Michael, was charged with using fire to damage the building. According to prosecutors, security video shows the suspect on Friday morning spraying a liquid near the outer door of Sanders' office and then lighting the area with a handheld lighter. On Sunday, work to clear the port of Baltimore's main shipping channel hit another milestone as crews started removing containers from the cargo vessel that rammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge last month. The Key Bridge Response Unified Command said it is progressing toward removing the pieces of the bridge that lie across the vessel's bow in order to take weight off the ship and eventually allow it to move. Army Corps engineers said last week that they were aiming to restore access to the main channel to normal capacity by the end of May. In total, 32 vessels so far have passed through temporary channels that pass under remaining parts of the key bridge on either side of the wreckage. Meanwhile, 11 cargo ships remain trapped in the port behind the wreckage, including four that support the overseas deployment of the U.S. military forces. If you weren't already convinced, here's another reason for coffee drinkers to keep drinking their brew. New research from, the, from Nestle finds that a compound in coffee could help you stay strong as you age. As we get older, we tend to lose muscle mass and strength, putting, up, putting us at higher risk for mobility problems, falls, and loss of independence. Now researchers have found that this compound in coffee can improve muscle function in aging humans, mice, and worms. You should know that the research is largely from Nestle Research, which owns the Nescafe coffee brand. But more research will, be, will need to be done to see whether drinking more coffee can actually, actually improve muscle function in aging adults. Procter & Gamble is recalling more than 8 million bags of Tide Pods laundry detergent because the exterior packaging could break, making it easier for people to accidentally ingest their contents. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission's notice, the recall covers 8.2 million packages of Tide Pods, Gain Flings, Ace Pods, and Aerial Pods, all types of liquid laundry detergent packet products. The detergent is packaged in individual flexible film bags that if improperly access, accessed can pose a risk of injury. The problematic outer bags are prone to ripping near their zipper tracks and were manufactured between September 2023 and February 2024. The detergent pods are sold at all major grocery chains across the U.S. as well as online at Amazon and other websites. 
No injuries have been reported, but there have been four reports of children accessing the liquid laundry packets. Procter & Gamble is offering consumers full refunds on lot numbers listed on its website at us.pg.com. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. James. He was surprised to find out that he has elevated blood pressure, which could turn into high blood pressure. So he talked with his doctor about a healthy path to get his numbers down. He quit smoking, which makes a big difference for his overall heart health. He also cut down on salt by watching out for high sodium on food labels and added a 30-minute walk five days a week to his routine. These healthy steps weren't easy, but lowering his blood pressure was worth it. Learn more about his healthy path. Welcome back. Now here's more news coming out of Braintree. Braintree Mayor Aaron Joyce has directed school superintendent James Lee to find an alternative to the proposed closing of the Highlands Elementary School. During last week's school committee meeting, Lee presented a recommendation of closing the elementary school as part of an effort to reduce the proposed school budget by up to $8 million. Closing the school, which has the largest enrollment of the system's six elementary schools, would save $559,000 in salaries from the school budget. The mayor said in a statement on Thursday that, quote, the poorly conceived and timed opinion presented by Superintendent Lee on Monday that we should close Highlands without the full vetting of where students would go and the full cost savings shared is not something residents deserve. The minimal savings offered, coupled with cost implications of recent Massachusetts School Building Authority partnered improvements, will not plug the gap meaningfully. I have directed the superintendent to find alternative savings that would preserve Highlands and programming." End quote. The mayor thanked all who have expressed their opinions in an outpouring of emails, phone calls, and public comment at school committee and PTO meetings in the last couple of weeks. On Friday, dozens of parents, students, and teachers rallied outside of Braintree Town Hall to stand against likely cuts to resources, staffing, and programs across the school district. In March, it was announced the schools needed to close an $8 million budget deficit so it may continue operating as it is now. If not, the schools could face cuts including 100 teachers and staff, extracurriculars, school closures, and more. Dozens lined Washington Street calling for the town to do everything it can do to avoid cuts. One parent said, quote, There's an army of people here that are willing to do anything. They just need to tell us what to do. End quote. The Kiddos Land Child Development Center in Braintree has secured a small grant for water improvements from the state. The Massachusetts Clean Water Trust Board of Trustees approved a total of over $8 million in new low-interest loans and grants at its April 3rd meeting. In total, nine grants were awarded at the meeting, including two focused on school water improvements. Kiddos Land Child Development Center, located on Granite Street, secured $6,000 in grants. The Framingham-based Krista McAuliffe's Charter School also received one of those grants worth $3,000. One lucky Braintree resident turned a grocery shopping trip into a very lucrative visit. Suxia Lin of Braintree was the lucky winner of a $1 million lottery prize from the multi-state Mega Millions game. Lin matched the five white balls for the drawing but missed out on the Mega Ball. Had she matched the Mega Ball, she would have cashed in the $735 million jackpot. Lynn, who bought the ticket at Cam Man Food Market in Quincy, claimed the one-time payment at the Massachusetts State Lottery headquarters in Dorchester. She hasn't decided yet, but might use some of her windfall, windfall to purchase a condo. The grocery store also benefits from Lynn's good fortune, earning a $10,000 bonus for the sale. Local officials are continuing to warn residents about swimming in the Manatiquit River. District 3 Town Councilor Elizabeth Maglio posted a video on social media showing how sewage and storm water was being disposed of into the Four River Basin. In her post, Maglio explained doing this prevents a mix of sewage and storm water from backing up into residents' basements. The area becomes more polluted every day and is not safe for swimming, fishing, or other recreational activities. Some residents were displeased with the footage and are calling out the mayor's office. According to Maglio, more information about mitigation and funding will soon be available to residents. Thank you for watching Branchy Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area.
Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, a retired captain from the Quincy Fire Department and the author of the book, Fighting Fire, A Proactive Approach. Do you know that electrical failures are the third leading cause of home fires? Cords and plugs led in this category, while extension cords dominated this category. To avoid these fires, plug heat-generated appliances directly into an outlet. Do not use power strips or extension cords on these appliances. Power strips are designed for use with electronics only. Do not put electrical cords underneath rugs or pinch behind furniture. Do not overload outlets. Charge laptops and phones on hard surfaces only. Finally, if an electrical device is not working as designed, it is time to repair it or replace it. Be conscious of your home environment and be safe. And thank you for doing so. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake that was centered in northern New Jersey was felt across New England last Friday morning and included much of Massachusetts. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the earthquake happened shortly before 10.30 a.m. and was felt from Washington, D.C. to as far as north as Maine and Canada. In Massachusetts, the earthquake was felt in various communities including Chelmsford, Dedham, Malden, Shrewsbury, Plymouth, and Northampton. White House Station, New Jersey is more than 260 miles from Boston and 220 miles from Worcester. So how is it that a 4.8 magnitude earthquake was felt from so far away? According to National Weather Service meteorologists, the earthquake was felt across Massachusetts because the bedrock on the east coast is older and the waves from earthquakes typically travel a little further than they would in California or the western United States. According to Weymouth police, two people, including the roommate of a woman found dead in an apparent homicide in her Weymouth home, are facing charges related to financial crimes that came to light during the investigation. John Harper and Kelly Shaw were both arrested in connection to the death of 56-year-old Christine Ruth Mello. Harper was charged with six offenses, including larceny over $1,200, possession of a stolen RMV document, larceny of a motor vehicle, receiving a stolen vehicle, improper use of a credit card, and possession of cocaine. The criminal complaint alleges he stole and used the dead woman's debit card in and her 2017 Buick LaCrosse. Shaw was arraigned on charges of check fraud, misleading police, larceny over $1,200, and forgery of a registry of motor vehicles document. Video surveillance captured Shaw using checks that Mello received as the beneficiary of a trust. Mello's mother died in January, leaving her as the beneficiary of a life insurance policy. Both suspects are being held on bail. The U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts has agreed to a plea deal with a Weymouth police officer who was accused of punching a handcuffed man 13 times without justification. According to a court document, the officer would receive no jail time in exchange for a guilty plea. That officer, Justin Chappell, was charged with one count of deprivation of rights under the color of law, which means depriving someone of his rights while wielding government power. The charges arise from an incident in July of 2022, which was caught on body-worn police camera. In the seven-minute video, Officer Chappell is seen punching the handcuffed man more than a dozen times. That man is identified by police as Donald McAdam, who police said had spit on the arresting officers. The plea deal for the officer recommended no incarceration, a fine no greater than $250,000, one year of supervised release under conditions that Chappelle complete a mental health program and 100 hours of community service. A longtime judge on the TV series America's Next Top Model and fashion photographer Nigel Barker was in Weymouth last week to take portraits of residents of the current senior living community. Barker is traveling around the Northeast photographing residents of six complexes owned by Monarch Communities, the New York-based parent company of The Current. While traveling to these communities, Barker said he loves to hear the stories of his senior subjects and tries to reflect them in his work. 
Last week, fans of the popular TV series The Queen's Gambit had the chance to see the real deal in person. Nadia Kosenteva, one of the world's top chess players, gave a simul exhibition at the South Shore Chess Club in Quincy, where she played 33 opponents at the same time. At the beginning of the simul, Kosenteva paced along the inner perimeter of five banquet tables. On the other side sat 33 nervous challengers. Some said they came for the privilege of being soundly defeated by a grandmaster. As the night went on, king after king fell crown first on the checkered boards. The master chess player's route turned from a large rectangle to a zigzag between surviving players. After four hours, the last king fell, leaving only the queen standing. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. That time of the year again, flu season. Getting vaccinated against the flu and COVID-19 can help keep you, your family, and your community healthy. You can even get both vaccines at the same time. Visit mass.gov slash flu shot to learn. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First, This Is Me Now chronicles the highly scrutinized love life of actor and singer Jennifer Lopez, including her relationships and personal healing journey. Produced by and starring Jennifer Lopez, you can watch This Is Me Now on Amazon Prime. Next, Scoop is an insider account of how the woman of Newsnight secured Prince Andrew's infamous 2019 interview about his friendship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. The film stars Gillian Anderson and Rufus Sewell. You can watch Scoop now on Netflix. Finally, Poison follows an Englishman who discovers a poisonous snake asleep in his bed. When the snake crawls into his stomach, his colleague and a doctor must find a way to save him. The film is directed by Wes Anderson and stars Benedict Cumberpatch and Dev Patel. You can watch Poison now on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on Bcam TV. We'll see you next time.